are we back? I think we're back. I'm hoping we're back. Okay, we're back. So let's see what we have here. We have $10 towards our TwitchCon um, goal, I should say. Oh, we have some new followers. Oh, we've got a sub from Timmy Tapperton. Thank you, Timmy Tapperton. Thank you for the sub. And we've got some followers. We have Anonymous. Thank you, Anonymous. We have a new follower with Kyle underscore James. Welcome to the family. Dankius underscore Maymay. And Anonymous Mouse 5607. Welcome to the family. You are now part of our family. Welcome. The fam ski, as I like to call it. I was trying to remember what I called it. The fam ski is what we're called. Fam ski. And if you join the subs, you're part of the fam ski force five. So everybody welcome Timmy to the fam ski force five. And now let's go to the actual stream where you can see my face. Hello, it's my face. Welcome to my face. Oh, my face froze. I don't. I don't like that. Oh, I see, because it's on. Got it. That's weird. No, I don't need you in a cafe. Nom, nom, nom. That's what we want to see, little rabbits. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, well, thank you guys so much. So now you can see my face. I'm going to check my Streamlabs too, so I can properly accredit you so if you have just become a new follower or a new subscriber you want to keep looking because I'm going to honor you with the traditional honors okay so don't touch that computer Dora don't touch that mouse unless you're stroking it softly but don't change the channel okay okay so let's welcome a nonny mouse. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the fam ski. And Timmy Tapperton. <laughs> How you doing, Timmy Tapperton? Welcome, Timmy Tapperton. You get hot. <laughs> and you get... My favorite Dean from Supernatural. It's one of the highest honors I can give you. Welcome to the Famsky Force 5. Let's honor Dankius Maymay. Great. Thank you, Dankius Maymay. Thank you for the follow. And Kyle James. Great. Great. Welcome. Welcome to the Famsky. Last evening, we've got some new family members as well. Please welcome Ryan the Gladiator. Great. Woohoo! Welcome. Versace Pleb. Welcome. Welcome to the Famski. Great. Great. Welcome. Cece No. Welcome to the Famski. Great. Great. Woohoo. Philly Day 9. Welcome to the Famski. Great to have you as part of our family. Is yeah. Yeah. The raccoons approve. Excellent. The 199 kid. Welcome to the family. Yeah. Yeah. Corian. Welcome to the family, Corian. Your name is pretty cool, I must say, and so myself. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoy your name, Corian. Swalski or Swal Great. Swalsi? Welcome, Swalsi. Thank you, Philiday9. Thank you for the follow. Welcome. Swalsey, welcome to the fam ski. Thank you for the follow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, fantastic. And just one last time that tier one Timmy Tapperton. Yeah. Thank you, Corian. Thank you. Timmy Tapperton. Bless you, child. Yeah. Thank you, Swalsey. Thank you. Timmy Tapperton, thank you for the subscribe. Timmy Tapperton, you are our first subscriber, actually. So as a first subscriber, you're going to get some special <laughs> privileges. So, oh, and you resubbed. Thank you. Thank you for the resub. So as a first subscriber and first resubscriber, you will get special privileges on our channel. I don't know what those are yet. I have to make them because you're the first one. But you're definitely going to get some recognition on the channel page for sure. The other thing is that we are very, very near 100 subscribers. We actually are at, let's see what we're at right now. So, not subscribers, sorry, followers. What? Following? No, that's not right. Where am I looking? Where am I trying to look? Hold on. Blue hair, remember. Blue hair. Dye blocks the brain cells. There we go. We're at 93 followers. So close to 100. When we get to 100 followers, all of those followers I've had from 0 to 100 will be recognized in the Hall of Fame because you are the first 100 followers, the ones who made up this channel from the ground up, you are the bricks in this famski holding us together, the foundation of our castle, and you will be honored forever on the page as the first 100 subscribers. Your name's gonna go down below. S sorry, followers, I don't know why I keep saying subscribers, but first 100 followers, you will be honored forever on the stream. So just keep that in mind if you are following you're going to be part of that recognition. That's just beautiful. You guys are quite beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you for your follows. Okay, so we're gonna continue with our story time. Now, I'm going to access a different story right now. I know we really enjoy J.R. Tolkien, but we're going to access a different story. Need to find it. Okay, this is from Story Central. It's an app on the phone. On the telephone here. Okay. Apparently it takes a long time to load. Let's read. And this is a Disney app you can get for your friends or your children. You pick a story and you can read it. So let's let's pick I'm gonna pick Buzz and Woody. And we have this option to read. We have to unlock it for one token. I don't know how you get tokens. Let's find out. How do you get a token? Probably have to pay money, right? It's always how it goes with these things. Grown-ups only enter the year you were born. Oh, jeez. I have to prove I'm a grown up. So you have to pay seven ninety nine to get a, a starter pack. Now I know that I have at least one story here for sure. Because they wouldn't let me get this without giving me something free. You know what I mean? Oh, there's scary stories for Halloween. I want to read scary stories. 
I want to preview this. I'm going to preview this story because it looks scary. Okay, we're going to preview this story. Look at that. Scary. I don't know about you, but that looks very scary. Toy Story of Terror. Very terrifying. It was a dark, spooky night. A woman was being chased through a cemetery by a vampire. The vampire was getting closer and closer. Suddenly, someone screamed. Run, Betsy, run, Rex called out. Bonnie and her family were in the car on their way to a family vacation. Bonnie's toys were in the trunk of the car watching a scary movie. Boree, Mr. Potato Head grumbled. Patience, Mr. Pricklepants advised. All great horror films start slowly. Mr. Pricklepants was an expert on scary movies. In fact, he considered himself an expert on all movies and plays and books. Well, Mr. Pricklebats, aren't you so fancy? Here's a picture. There you go. Have to wait till it's not blurry. Inside the car, Bonnie rubbed her eyes. Are we there yet? She asked with a yawn. Not for a few hours, her mom replied. You can go back to sleep. Cuff thump! Just then the car hit a pothole and blew a tire. The toys went flying. Jessie fell into a toolbox and the lid slammed shut. Help! she screamed. Very terrifying. Look at that face. That face will give you nightmares. Woody and Buzz Lightyear jumped into action. The two forced open the box and helped Jessie climb out. Jessie was frightened. I couldn't. I couldn't find a way out. She said, gasping. What's the matter with Jessie? Trixie whispered. She was abandoned in a box for years, Mr. Potato Head explained. Outside, thunder boomed and lightning flashed. The storm was getting worse. Bonnie's mom pulled over at a roadside motel. The family would be staying there until the tire on their car was fixed. Don't you know what happens at motels and horror stories? Don't go there. Bonnie reached into the trunk and grabbed her toys. A roadside motel is one of the most common locales for a horror film, Mr. Pickles pointed out. When they reached their room, Mr. Potato's Head decided to look around. I wouldn't go out if I were you, Mr. Pricklepants warned. The first to leave usually gets it. Mr. Potato Head scoffed. He wasn't worried. And there's Mr. Pricklepants. And I don't remember him from Toy Story at all, so he's not that memorable, I guess. Oh, and if you want to know what happens next in the story, then you'll have to download the app and pay seven ninety nine. <laughs> Because that's all that happens. What do you think will happen to Mr. Potato Head? Will he lose his potato head? Will he die? Or will something slightly scary happen and then it will be resolved to realize that it was not actually a scary thing at all, but just some noises and such that happens? Probably. I just love scary stories though, don't you? Okay, so we're going to go back to one of the ones that we actually have. 
Ooh. The Incredibles. The Incredibles. A storybook. Mr. Incredible was a super, a hero with special powers. His greatest fan was a boy named Buddy. Buddy wanted to be a super too. He invented rocket boots that allowed him to fly. He even asked Mr. Incredible if he could be his sidekick. But Mr. Incredible told Buddy that fancy boots didn't make someone super. Supers were born, not made. Mr. Incredible married a super named Elastigirl. She could stretch into any shape. One day, Mr. Incredible saved someone who did not want to be saved. He saved someone who didn't want to be saved, like someone who is going to take their life. That's a little intense for children's bedtime story, don't you think? Hmm. Mr. Incredible was sued. <laughs> What? What kind of children's bedtime story is this? I mean, I know it was in the movie, but when you're watching the movie, it's like, oh, haha, ha, this is funny, and it's a kid's show. But when you're reading it in a bedtime story, it just doesn't sound the same. It doesn't go. Soon, lots of people were suing supers. The government told the supers not to use their powers anymore. They had to go into hiding and live like normal people in the super relocation program. SRP. Look at them living like normal people. Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl became Bob and Helen Pa. They lived in the suburbs and had three kids, Violet, Dash, and Jack-Jack. Yeah! Yeah! Welcome, Gamer x 2 c and thank you for the follow. The raccoons approve, and so do I. Welcome to the famski. The supers tried their best to be normal, but it was difficult. Violet could generate force fields and turn invisible. Dash had super speed. And only little Jack-Jack didn't seem to have any powers. What if they had named him, like something other than dash would he still be super fast what if they named him like robert or slow guy <laughs> would he still be fast that's what i'm wondering there's a picture it's a very interesting picture <laughs> bob missed saving people so did his friend lucius he had once been a super named frozone one night, Bob and Lucius saved some people from a fire. The next day, a woman named Mirage contacted Bob. She knew he was a super and offered him a secret mission. Bob knew this was his chance to make a difference. He told Helen he had a business trip and then got on a plane with Mirage. The two flew to a secret island. Mirage told Bob that the government had lost control of a robot named the Omnidroid. Every moment you spend fighting, it only increases its knowledge of how to beat you, Mirage said. Look at that high-tech super gear they've got. Very fancy. Mr. Incredible used all his strength against the Omnidroid. At last, he tricked it into defeating itself. When Mr. Incredible went home, he felt like a new man. He even had his friend Edna Moe design a new super suit for him. And there he is, facing the Omnidroid. What a man, what a man. Soon, Mirage contacted Mr. Incredible again. She had another mission for him. But when Mr. Incredible arrived, he learned that Mirage was not all she seemed. Her boss was Buddy, the boy who had wanted to be Mr. Incredible's sidekick. He was all grown up and went by the name Syndrome. Dun dun dun. Syndrome had invented the Omnidroid to make himself more powerful. He tried to capture Mr. Incredible, the super escaped in an underwater cave mr incredible found the remains of a gazer beam 
a super who had died battling the Omnidroid. Mr. Incredible knew he had to stop Buddy. Oh, there's his remains. Ew, he's a skeleton. Back at home, Helen began to suspect that Bob was up to something. She went to visit Edna Mode. Edna was thrilled to see Helen. She had so much fun making Bob's new suit that she made one for Helen. In fact, she had made new suits for the whole family. Each suit came with a homing device for handy tracking. How would you like it if your mother had a homing device for you? Very creepy. Helen put on her super suit and activated Bob's homing device. As she flew toward the homing signal, she discovered that Dash and Violet had stowed away with her. Just then, a missile hit the plane they were flying on. The plane went down and landed in the ocean. Elastigirl shaped herself into a boat, and Dash used his super speed to power them toward the island where Bob was in trouble. Family teamwork. Beautiful. Back on the island, Syndrome had captured Mr. Incredible. From his prison cell, Mr. Incredible listened to the attack on his family. Desperate, Mr. Incredible grabbed Mirage. Release me now or I'll crush her, he said. But Syndrome did not care. He knew that Mr. Incredible would never hurt anyone, no matter how hurt he was. Meanwhile, Mr. Incredible's family arrived on the island. Elastigirl brought the children to a cave. She told them to stay put and then left to find their father. Suddenly, a large ball of fire filled the cave. Dash and Fl Violet fled. The fire was the rocket exhaust from Syndrome's base. He had launched his Omnidroid toward the city. Watch out. Elastigirl found her husband inside, Syn inside Syndrome's headquarters. Mirage was angry that Syndrome had been willing to let Mr. Incredible hurt her. Realizing how evil Syndrome was, she let Mr. Incredible go. Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl raced to Violet and Dash, who had been surrounded by Syndrome's gods. Together, the family fought off the henchmen. Woo-hoo indeed. Just then, Syndrome arrived. He used an immobile to freeze the supers. Then he flew off to the city where his Omnidroid was already wrecking havoc. He planned to defeat the robot in front of the whole city. Then everyone would think he's the hero. What a dick, am I right? Violet used a force field to break the Immobile's hold on her. She freed the rest of her family and they flew to the city. When they arrived, the Omnidroid was destroying everything. Syndrome tried to use a remote control to stop it, but the robot had become too powerful. It knocked Syndrome out. What an idiot. By the way, is anyone chatting in the chat? Because I have not seen anything in the chat in like the last 10 minutes. Now I find that unusual. Perhaps my chat is not reloading and so I'm going to reload it really quick. If you have been chatting, I apologize if I didn't say anything to you. It's because literally nothing was showing. I'm going to bring my chat onto my actual channel here so I can see. Hello. Okay, so I see that Gosuki DX Music said hello. Well, thank you for the hello and hello back at you. Okay. It was up to the supers to save the day. 
individually, they were awesome. As a team, they were unstoppable. Their old friend Frozone showed up and together they defeated the Omnidroid. Frozone sounds more like a frozen yogurt store than an actual superhero. Just saying. The people of the city cheered, glad the supers had returned. It's kind of ironic though. The only reason they needed to return was because of some dude who wanted to be a super. So, in a way, they never would have had to save everyone if they didn't exist to begin with. <coughs> yeah! <coughs> Thank you so much for the follow. Thank you for that. Um, well, besides coughing and dying <laughs> and trying to fix this chat, there we go. <laughs> what I do on this stream is everything we uh, we play games, we do a variety of games, we do bedtime stories. Good morning, Matthias underscore gaming. Welcome back to the stream. Um, sometimes we sing. I literally do everything on this stream. Literally everything. Right now, it's the good night stream. And on the good night stream, I get ready for bed and I read a bedtime story. So that's what we're doing right now. We're reading about the Incredibles. Okay. So. The Supers save the day. Fantastic. Did I show you the picture? There they are. Saving the day. When the Incredibles got home, Syndrome was flying above the house with Jack-Jack. Suddenly, the baby turned into a little monster. The villain dropped him. As he fell, Jack-Jack pulled off part of Syndrome's rock rocket boot. The villain plummeted to the ground, gone forever. Mr. Incredible threw Elastigirl into the air. She caught Jack-Jack and brought him safely back to the ground. And there's cute little Jack-Jack. I wish we could have seen the picture of him turning into a monster. I wonder what he looks like. But instead, we do have a cute little baby. That's nice too. With the danger in the city over, the Incredibles returned to their undercover life. But fitting in was just a little easier now. Violet was more confident and Dash was able to use his super speed on the track team. Come on, that's cheating. Life was back to normal for the Incredibles, but they were always ready to use their powers to keep the world safe. Dot dot dot. As a family. And there they are with a happy family. Very cute. And that is the end of that story. A lovely story it was. Now. Oh wait, we get points. Way to go. We read a story. So we get some points there. What do those points do for us? We unlock a trophy. First book read. Excellent. Well done. And a Pixar star for the first Pixar book read. And the first Incredibles book read. So many trophies. We're doing so well on this game. What now? Open the action menu to manage your family and your tokens. Okay, let's look at my stats. Books read 1, days read 1, pages read 29. Wow, we read so many pages. Our rank is new reader, and our next rank in two stars will be Book Scout. Isn't that lovely? My trophies. So we have Earn Your Ears. Very good. There's lots of, there's actually lots of trophies we can earn here. Can you see that? So, so far we've earned a few of them. The Pixar one, the Incredible ones, and the first book read one. So fantastic. Love it. Okay, anything else that we should know about this? 
change reader, we can have different readers. Okay, that's good. What else can we do here? Stats, codes, shop. Okay. And so what happens if we want to read another book? Let's see. Let's say we want to read Mickey's Halloween Treat. So I click on the book and it says unlock for two tokens. So that's my question is how do we get these tokens? Get unlimited reading with Disney Store Central. Access to hundreds of books, exclusive Disney content, new books every week, earn rewards. And that's by subscribing. So what do you have to do to subscribe? That's what I want to know. Okay, so one month subscription is $7.99. And you can get one week free trial. Okay. Well, that's fun. Well, if we do the free trial, though, do we have to, like, enter a credit card? Because I hate doing that. I, like, I hate, 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 hate that. So let's see. Ooh, it's gonna make me it says automatically automatically renews until cancelled to stop cancel subscriptions and setting before the next billing date free for seven days okay we'll do that we'll do the free for seven days and we just have to cancel it before that okay so now that it's free for seven days what what happens now it's loading it's loading Go Sukidex Music. What kind of streams do you watch? Let's go back to the, the scary story we were reading earlier. I liked that one. We have to download it. Okay, so make sure my Wi-Fi is turned on. Go ahead and download your book. Ooh, five minute spooky tales. That could be fun. I'm looking through these books here. Okay, did it download yet? How long does it take to download a book? Great. So last time we were reading about this, the Toy Story Terror. And what we read so far in the story is that the toys were watching a scary movie. And then Jessie fell in a box. And she was scared for a moment, but then she got out of the box with the help of her friends. And then as they were traveling with their owner, their owner and her mother had a popped tire. So they had to retire from their tire at a local motel and as we know all scary stories start at a scary hotel I mean motel motels are scarier than hotels I don't know why but they are the hotel motel holiday inn okay so then Mr. Potato Hood Potato Hood <laughs> Potato Hood <laughs> Mr. Potato Hood, he's pretty, he's pretty gangster. He decided he was going to head off into the night. And he was warned by Mr. Pricklepants not to go. So here's where we left off in the story. Mr. Pricklepants is warning Mr. Potato Head not to go outside. Let's see what happens. The toys went after Mr. Potato Head, but he had vanished. Maybe this place is haunted. Mr. Pricklepants whispered. The toys flipped up to look for Mr. Potato Head. Suddenly, Rex screamed. Ew, I stepped in something, he said, trying to wipe the mysterious goo off his foot. Ugh. As Buzz looked around, oh wait, picture, picture of the goo. Pretty gooey, if you ask me. As Buzz looked around, he realized that Mr. Potato Head had stepped in the same stuff 
he had left a trail of footprints. Trixie followed the tracks into an air vent. As she looked around, she fell in and disappeared. Once the heroes enter, there's no turning back, Mr. Pricklepants noted. The toys followed Trixie into the vent. Buzzes glow in the dark, features lighting the way. What happens now? Rex asked Mr. Pricklepants. This would be the part where the characters get separated and then picked off one by one answered the hedgehog. Seconds later, something snatched Mr. Pricklepants. Then it snatched Rex, Woody, and Jesse, and Buzz looked at each other and ran. Just then, something slowly crept out of the darkness toward them. It was Mr. Potato Head's arm! It was trying to tell us something, Buzz said. It's the number one, Woody said. I think maybe it's pointing up, Jesse said. Wait, there's the picture. There we go. Above the toys was a vent. The trio followed it to a bathroom. As Jesse looked around, something snatched Woody and Buzz. Then something pulled Jesse under the sink. It was Combat Carl, a soldier toy with a missing hand. This place isn't safe for toys, he warned her. The pair heard a noise. We're trapped, Jesse cried. Combat Carl never gives up, the soldier said. Combat Carl finds a way. The toys tried to run, but something snatched Combat Carl. Jessie was on her own. I don't know about you viewers, but this is getting pretty intense. I don't know what's going to happen to Jessie or Combat Carl or Prickle Pants or all the other toys. The cowgirl hid in the bathtub. Seconds later, she heard a loud rip. Claws slashed at the shower curtain as Jessie backed up. An iguana appeared. It had Mr. Potato Head's arm in its mouth. Jesse prepared for the worst, but the iguana was actually friendly. It's, it swallowed the arm in one gulp, then gave Jesse a big lick. Grabbing her gently in its mouth, the iguana carried the cowgirl to a room behind the motel's lobby. It, he set her in a basket and rang a bell. Ding! Excellent find, Mr. Jones. The manager said, coming into the back room. He had trained his pet iguana to steal toys from the motel guests so he could sell them on the internet. How preposterous! The manager posted Jessie's picture on a website and put her into a glass cabinet. The cowgirl's friends were there too, even Combat Carl and his friend Combat Carl Jr. Now because they're toys, it's not actually that scary. If you think about this, if they were humans and they were at a motel and somebody snatched them up and put them into a glass case to try to sell their pictures on the internet, that'd be pretty disturbing. So think of it that way. And this is the creeper. Just imagine this creeper snatches you out of a hotel room and takes makes you take pictures and then puts them on the internet. That's definitely... <laughs> <laughs> the part, the start of a whole story, am I right? A few minutes later, the manager returned. He checked his computer. He had sold Woody. Reaching into the cabinet, he grabbed the cowboy and packed him in a box. A delivery truck would be arriving soon to pick up the package. Woody! Jesse whispered, sadly. What started out as a classic horror film has turned into something more of a tragedy, Mr. Picklepants observed. A few minutes later, the manager sold Jessie too. He had just taken her out when the mechanic arrived to fix Bonnie's car. Where is this guy finding to sell toys this quickly? And can he please show me where to sell my beanie babies? Because those things are staying put. 
Jessie tried to unlock the cabinet, but she couldn't reach the latch. Even worse, the delivery truck had arrived. The driver came into the back room and took the package with Woody inside. Okay, the delivery truck man's already arrived in the middle of a dark, stormy, rainy night. These people are faster than Amazon, am I right? Jesse didn't know what to do, but Combat Carl had a plan. Listen, he said. In a few minutes, the delivery lady is going to come through that door and take the other boxes, and you're going to be in one of them. Jesse panicked. I can't get in a box, she said. Jesse, the soldier shouted. When Combat Carl gets stuck in a jam, he says to himself, Combat Carl never gives up. Combat Carl finds a way. Now say it, he ordered. Jesse tried. Combat Carl never gives up. Combat Carl... You are not Combat Carl, he shouted at her. Oh, Jesse never gives up. Jesse finds a way, the cowgirl repeated, finally understanding. And here is a picture. Very beautiful, very beautiful indeed. Jesse snuck into the empty lobby, opening one of the boxes that the manager had packed. She freed a robot toy. Bravely, Jesse crawled into the box into the robot's place. If she could get on that delivery truck, she could free Woody. The plan was working until the delivery lady taped the box shut and threw it in the truck. Jesse began to panic. Then she remembered Combat Carl's words. Jesse never gives up. Jesse finds a way, she told herself. Feeling around, the cowgirl found a paper clip. She used it to slit the tape and crawled out of the box. Then Jessie found Woody. The two returned to the back, to the back room to free their friends. And there's Jessie, very determined with a paper clip in her mouth. Excellent. Suddenly, Jessie heard Barney's voice coming from the lobby. The car was fixed. Bonnie's family was getting ready to leave. The cowgirl raced towards the curtain that separated the back room from the lobby. She was almost there when Mr. Jones caught her. Jessie kicked the iguana and it spit something out. My hand! Combat Carl shouted from inside the cabinet. Mr. Potato Head's arm was also inside the iguana's mouth. Jessie grabbed the arm and used it to pull the curtain open. At that moment, Bonnie looked through the curtain and saw the cabinet. My toys! She cried, running into the back room. Are those my daughter's toys? Bonnie's mom asked the nervous motel manager. Meanwhile, Mr. Jones put Jessie in a basket on the floor and rang the bell. Looking down, Bonnie saw the cowgirl. Jessie! The little girl shouted, pointing at her doll. What a creepy man just going around stealing children's toys and posting pictures of them on the internet. Later, back in the trunk of Bonnie's car, the toys celebrated. You did it, Jessie. You saved us all, Buzz said. Jessie didn't give up. Jessie found a way, the cowgirl said. Mr. Potato Head looked fondly at his arm. We ain't never gonna get separated again, he said. Cuff thwomp! Just then, the car hit a bump. Mr. Potato Head's pot scattered all around the trunk. Ah, nuts, he said. Everyone laughed, and that Mr. Pricklepants noted was a sure sign that the story had reached its end. Look at that gang of friends right there. That's quite beautiful. And that is the end of that story, and I hope you enjoyed the Toy Story story. Story. We have one more story that we could go through if you'd like, and it's Alice in Wonderland, Queen of Frights. If you would like for me to continue with this story, feel free to enter the chat and say continue. And if you don't enter the chat, I'll still continue. <laughs> okay, Queen of Frights. Where are we going again? Alice asked the Mad Hatter as they dashed through Wonderland together. 
Where is it the right question? The Mad Hatter said. Well, then, what is the right question? Alice asked, confused. Not what, why? The Mad Hatter replied. What we are doing is having fun. You should ask me why we are going. And there they are. Well, they're a little bit blurry. Unblurry yourself, please. Really? Really? Well, this one doesn't want to unblurry. Unlike the other ones that unblurried so easily, this one doesn't want to. How rude, you know what I mean? It's quite rude. Let's try it again. Okay. Alice shook her head. Wonderland logic was a bit confusing, but she was finally getting the hang of it. Very well, she said. Why are we going? I don't know why, the Mad Hatter answered. I just know that we are in a hurry. The Mad Hatter rushed along and a curious Alice followed behind. Overhead the sky grew dark and fat raindrops began to fall. The Mad Hatter plucked a flower and handed it to her. A little rain never hurts anyone. Here, use this. Nearby at the castle, the Queen of Hearts was feeling quite cranky. She had not slept well the night before and was in need of a good long nap. If anyone disturbs me, I will have their head. She barked at the guards, and she stalked into her royal chamber. Spotting the rain streaming in through the open window, the queen frowned. Nasty rain, she muttered, closing the shutters tight. Then she took off her crown, placed it gently on the table beside her, and climbed into bed. In no time at all, the queen of hearts was sound asleep. But the queen was not a quiet sleeper, and she was soon snoring so loudly that she woke herself up. When she opened her eyes, she saw the table beside her was empty. My crown! she cried, jumping out of bed. The queen of hearts looked round frantically. Finally, she spotted the crown on the other side of the room. This is some kind of trick, the queen said. Then she raised her voice so that everyone could hear me. Whoever is trying to trick me will lose their head. The queen climbed back into bed and closed her eyes. But before she could even start snoring, a strange sound filled the room. What is that racket? She cried, sitting up. And she saw her rocking chair swaying back and forth. Back and forth. Humph! Must be a breeze, the queen told herself. But the window and the shutters were shut tight, just as she had left them. Something else was moving the chair. Hmm. What do you think it is? Who's there? The queen yelled. She tried to sound threatening, but her voice was beginning to shake. She stomped around the room and stopped the, chocking, the rocking chair from rocking. Then she climbed back into bed and tried to go back to sleep. And there she is, stopping the chair. She looks rather frightened, doesn't she? The Queen of Hearts closed her eyes. She had just started to snore when a noise woke her up. Squeak! 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 The Queen bolted up in bed. She saw the doors to her wardrobe were swinging wide open. The hinges were making an eerie squeaking sound. Whoever 
uh, is t trying to trick me will lose their head. The queen stuttered in a frightened whisper. She ran up and closed the wardrobe doors. Then she turned to go back to bed. Creak, creak. The queen spun around. Something had come out of the wardrobe. It had legs but no feet. It had arms but no hands. And worst of all, it had no head. Ah! The queen of hearts screamed. A ghost! Alice and the Mad Hatter had just arrived outside the castle when they heard the Queen's screams. Oh my, is this where we are? The Mad Hatter said. Here is not a good where. We should go. As Alice turned to follow the Mad Hatter, she spotted something on the ground. I think I know why we are doing what we are doing, she said. We need to go inside that castle. And there they are, heading towards the castle. A few moments later, Alice and Mad Hatter burst into the Queen's chamber. Ghost! Ghost! The Queen of Hearts yelled. She was as white as a sheet and trembling from head to toe. Alice marched up to the ghost and pulled off its shirt. It was the March Hare! The little Dormouse peeked out of the frock front pocket of the March Hare's jacket. Oh, how silly. It wasn't a ghost at all, but the March Hare. Should have known. I remember now, the Mad Hatter cried. We were playing hide and seek. We were looking for a place to hide, the March Hare said. But nowhere seemed to work. The crown was too small. The chair was too creaky, and the wardrobe too stuffy. Brrr, the queen looks angry. She also kind of looks like a big man. The queen of hearts turned a deep shade of red. Mm, off with your heads, she screamed. The mad had a new when it was time to go. He tapped the march chair on the shoulder. You're it. He cried, then ran off. Alice followed him. The palace guards chased after her. Off with their heads! The Queen of Hearts screamed again. Outside the rain had stopped, but luckily the ground was still muddy. The guards slipped and slid, giving Alice and her friends a chance to get away. And look at them running. Well, I'd look. There you go. Much better. Back in the Mad Hatter's garden, Alice and her friends enjoyed a nice cup of tea. Oh, that was fun, the Mad Hatter exclaimed. The March Hare agreed. Let's play another game, he said. What do you say, Alice? The Mad Hatter asked. I think I've had enough games for one day, Alice replied. I'm quite fond of my head and I'd like to keep it. They all toasted with their tea. Wait for it. <laughs> oh, there it goes. There it goes. Clear as a whistle. Okay, how many more stories do we have in the storybook collection here? Two more stories. Okay, so I'm going to save the next two stories for tomorrow, if you guys like the Disney stories. So we were reading J.R. Tolkien, Three Minute Tolkien, and we are reading these Disney stories as well, so you guys can tell me which ones you prefer. 
and which ones you enjoyed. And if you missed any, you can go back into our video and watch the previous broadcast to see the previous stories. Okay, so I don't think we get any stars for reading that book since we didn't technically finish it. I think we get a store where we finish it. I think that's how it goes. But let's see. So if we keep flipping through it, flip, 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 flip. Oh, then we would get our stars. Look at that. Way to go. So we got four, six stars. We earned a new rank. Book Scout, congratulations. And close the book. Great. So you guys will have to tell me what you think about this app. So if you're interested in reading stories for yourself or if you have children at home or you just like Disney stories because you're an old dork like me, then you can go onto this app. You can sign up it's free and you just go through and you have you choose characters and you can read unlimited disney stories and the app is called what is it called hold up oh it's called story central there it is story central with a little picture of What's that guy's name? Lightning McQueen. So Story Central, this is where you can go download the app and you can read little Disney stories. Especially good for children, so I recommend it, I guess. Because we just used it and it seemed pretty cool to me. It also can read the story to you. So if you want it to read to you, you can do that as well. Let's try it. Read. Read now. Is it working? Oh, I have it turned down. It's the download too. You have to download the story. So I'm downloading this one called Elena, the Secret of Avalor. Once you've downloaded it, you can press read to me. I wonder if we have to change the page or it goes. Okay, so we change the page and it will read to us. This is Sophia. She discovered a secret library filled with real life stories that needed happy endings. Now, Sophia is the storykeeper and she is in charge of making those endings happen. Okay, so you can see how this app would be quite darling for your children if you have kids at home. If you have nieces, nephews, it's quite sweet. There's so many different stories for them to choose from. And if they're reading age, they can read it on their own. If they're not, they can listen to it. And even so, if they can read, it will help them to listen to it to become a more fluid reader. So I really like this app, actually. It's quite cute. I mean, so many choices to read from. What kid doesn't like Disney? And they can read their favorite characters or explore new ones. I think it's really quite cool. Especially because it's rewarding them for reading. When they read, they get these little stars. They earn badges. I wish they had something like this when I was a child learning to read. I probably would have read more. How cute it is. And there's pictures and it reads to you. Honestly, I think all parents should use this these days. I mean, people aren't reading to their kids at bedtime anymore. That's kind of what we're doing here, isn't it? You know, just 
having our good night stream, bringing back the tradition of bedtime stories and reading them together. And so I hope this inspires you to have a nice relaxing night and that you can go to bed and just have sweet dreams. And if you have children or you have a child in your life, niece, nephew, whatever, children just running around your neighbor. Do you have a neighbor with a child just kidnap them for an evening and read them a freaking story from this app because it's just quite delightful. Anyways, thank you so much everybody for the stream. Thank you for your follows. Thank you for all you have done. I'm very I'm very excited for our first subscriber, Timmy Tapperton, and for all the followers we have. We're so close to 100. All those first 100 subs, uh, followers are going to join us in our Hall of Fame. Just thank you guys so much. It's been amazing. So now we're going to end the stream, and I'm going to end the stream with our credits. And our credits are going to honor those of us, those of you who played a part in the stream today so let's get ready to have our credits rolling let's roll those credits hopefully it's still working Go credits, go. It's not going. Let's try it over here. Oh, Timmy Tapperton. Timmy Tapperton is our new stream boss for this evening. He's got an HP level of 18, of 1180, I mean. So he's our new stream boss here. There he is. So you guys need to do more things like donate or follow to help lower Timmy Tapperton's HP if you'd like to beat the stream boss and have your name placed there instead. Well, just honoring our people who've given donations. We are ten dollars into our goal to go to TwitchCon. We are close to our goal. Doesn't show us the number where. I don't like that. I'd like to change that. I think. Do you guys think it would be better to actually see the, the follower goal a little bit more clearly? There we go. So we're at 105 followers. That's amazing. So we are 63% of the way there. When we get to 166 followers, we're gonna have our All Hollows Follows uh, Halloween party to celebrate with some Halloween cosplay. We have 23 more days until Halloween. Very exciting. Thank you for all of those who followed us today. Let's 
see if we can get these to go now. Credits, there you go. Thanks for supporting the stream. Followers, Gosu Kid X Music and Gamer X2C. Thank you for supporting the stream. Thank you for Timmy Tapperton, our subscriber and resubscriber. Thank you for our followers. We have Swalsi. Swalsi? Swal Swalsi? Thank you, An Anonymous5607. Thank you, Denkius underscore May May. Thank you, Kyle underscore James and Ryan the Gladiator, Versace Pleb, CC No, Felly Day 9, then 199 Kid. Thank you all for your following. You guys are all part of my fam ski, and it's been amazing having you on the stream this evening, and I hope to see you in the future. We'll see you again tomorrow. Hopefully for some variety gaming and of course our good night stream for another storytelling. Good night, thank you all, love you and see you tomorrow.